Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews, and this being a show where I talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Promised Land. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Immediately picking up with the whole Billy and Joe thing. I was like, all right, how long have you been back? He's like, Joe, don't believe... No, how long have you been back? And he's like, been back like a while. Joe punches him square in the face and let's go. It says, let's go. Lady's like, no, can we just talk about... He's like, I wasn't talking to you. And just like left with uh, uh, Joe Jr. Well, Jr. And so Jr. ended up spreading every the word to both Carmen and Antonio. And I love that Carmen's like, oh, should I invite Uncle Billy to my birthday party? And Lady's like, you think this is a joke? Get off, get your butt off my counter, Carmen. And Carmen's like, what did I do? I'm like, do you not realize how jacked up it is? You know there's this whole, because even Junior's joking, being like, yeah, our family situation is pretty jacked up. It's like, you know how complicated it is. This ain't no laughing matter. This is, there's some bad blood between your your uncle and your dad. And you got the nerve to joke about this? Shut up. You know, it's just kind of like, you could tell like Carmen, like uh, Letty was almost like, shut up, you, ooh. If I could, I'd smack you for that. Like, don't joke about this. It's too serious of an issue. So, and I, I mean, so it's actually really heartbreaking to know, like, so much happened between Letty and Joe in this episode in the regard of he's so pissed at her to the point he won't even talk to her. She's, like, open up to him. And I'm going to skip ahead. I thought that was the most heartbreaking thing when he was like, you want me to open up to you? You want to know how it felt when I saw you two together? It hurt because he's like, I've always been in love with you since the day we first met. I've loved you. And you've known that. Like, even when I was with, like, I always put you first before, like, before me and Margaret even got together, I put you first. Even when me and Margaret were together, I put you first. I've always put you first. And the fact of the matter is, it's almost like it's not reciprocal. Uh, because even Margaret talked about it with Carmen. It's like, right, your dad love uh, Letty loves your dad, but no one's been able to turn Letty's head the way Billy has. And even in the past, you can see it like she kind of like constantly torn between the both of them because they it's it's the thing of I think legitimately she fell for both of them. It's just like and she ended up making a choice. Things didn't work out, but it doesn't erase like the fact is like because no matter like him being away, she even said it previously. Him being away made it so much easier to hate him. Now that he's back in her life again, it's just in, in making all those feelings resurface. But for her, it's like I loved Billy, yes, a long time ago. You and me, we've been married for twenty years, but for but for Joe, it runs deeper. It's like he's loved her even longer than they've been married, you know. And it is a heartbreaking thing when he kind of talks to her about like right. You know, when we came to this country, you put your faith in God. I put my faith in you. No matter what anything else was, I believed. I believe that that trust would get me through anything. That that trust would be the one thing I could latch on to. And you've broken that trust. Because for him, that trust that he has with Letty, it's a foundation of everything. She's been the most important thing to him. And it's like... To have that trust crumbled. And it's so interesting because he's talking to Veronica about, like, yeah, like, when you have, like, when you lose that trust between you and partner, you and a partner, like, what do you have after that? Because he's like, we're not good, but he's like, I want us to be. And so, are they going to get a divorce? Who knows? And it's just heartbreaking seeing Lady because legitimately nothing happened. But the problem is, it's like, you lied to me. I've never lied to you. Like, um... That's kind of been a key point to him. Well, that's actually kind of something he actually brought up to Mateo. Like, I've never liked you nor your mom. So that's what makes it sting even more. Because it's like, she liked me. After everything we've been through, we know each other's secrets. We know everything about each other. We had this past connection that no one else knows about. Hell, your son and your ex-wife are digging dirt trying to figure it out. But it is a secret all three of them are like Billy... Uh, Joe and Letty are connected through and it's like we've been through so much together and you do this you know how I feel about my brother and the sad thing is Billy was like we should tell Joe but Letty's the one that kept waiting and waiting and now it blew up in her face you know because she was hoping like given enough time Joe will ease up and she will be able to bring uh, Billy back into the fold he is family he is the father of her son like you know plus once again all the good work that he's been doing with Junior too so it's just a heartbreaking situation. I hope they can find a way through this. It was interesting when Joe did start dancing with Margaret. And even Lady's like, right, you want to hear me say it? Fine. It made me jealous because you can tell it rubbed her the wrong way. Because it's like, I guess like even when they were, to, just like probably when her and Billy were together, it probably rubbed Joe the wrong way. Probably when they were together on some level, it probably rubbed Lady the wrong way. And it still rubbed, it, rubbed her the wrong way this time too. 
Because even their children are all kind of standing like, oh, this is yeah, this is kind of weird. Because I think for so long they've seen their parents. I mean, to be fair, their parents haven't been together for like 20 years. To be fair, Margaret bounced for a good chunk of that time. But it's like, yeah, they've been enemies for so long. It's weird to see our family, our parents like dancing and arm like hand in hand like that. It's like, oh, it's weird. So, but like, like I said, it's just, it's heartbreaking when they see the whole lady situation being what it is. Um, you know, I, like, I knew, like, Margaret had her own reasons. I actually let it, I am an idiot. I completely forgot about the, oh, right, the reason why you're cozying up to, Mar uh, to Carmen is because you want her 5% stake in the, uh, the vineyard and just, like, the Joe's business. I was like, right, I actually completely forgot about it. I mean, I knew the poor purpose was, like, to get close to Carmen because you get more of your children against Joe. Like, because you already have Antonio in your corner. Uh, is she going to bother with Mateo? Probably not, because it's like, well, she doesn't have the familial, familial connection to Mateo. Also, um... There's also the element of, like, right, like, he doesn't really have any stake in this, so you're, he's probably not worth going after. Like, he's a piece on the board that's, like, you feel like it's unimportant. Because um, the thing is, if he probably would be an ally just because of how much he hated Joe. I think this episode shifted a lot, but we'll get to Mateo a little bit later on. But she's trying to stack the board in her favor, like, get uh, everyone on her side with Carmen because even Antonio was like, ah, you're going above and beyond to try and get that 5% for, and she's like, oh, you're being cynical. The sad thing is, it doesn't matter what your true intentions are. Like, oh, I am going to, uh, I, uh, I love that I'll be able to get my uh, daughter back into my life. It's like, no matter what, your, like, the ulterior motives will always shine through. Because even if you are trying to legitimately have a relationship with Carmen, always in the back of my mind going forward, and I figured it was just manipulation beforehand, but specifically the monetary value of, oh, the 5% stake in the company that she has because she needs a higher percentage so that she could overtake the company. Like, your kids, I don't know, I, I've talked about this, I think I've brought this up before, but like, I don't know what Margaret think is going to be the end result. Like, if you take over the business and everything, you think your kids are going to come to you, oh, arms open wide, it's like, no, they'll be like, oh, cool. So you being around us, getting to know me, getting close to me these past few weeks, mom, was just you manipulate me. Oh, cool. I see how it is. Like, I don't know why she thinks it's going to be a happy family, because I think in the end result, she's been planning her revenge for so long. The problem is she doesn't care about who she's going to hurt in the process. And when she hurt, when she hurts Joe, all she's going to end up doing is hurting her family in the process. But she doesn't care because she's going to go full like uh, scorched earth on them. And that's why I also think it's so interesting because Antonio is just going to be in that same boat. He's just so focused on revenge that he doesn't see, like, what this is going to do to his siblings. Yeah, you might have your resentment towards your dad. Yes, you guys have issues. But, like, you know, does your mom actually have your best, um, best, uh... Does she have the best intentions when it comes to you? No, you're just all means to an end. Like the way she's treating Carmen, but I guess Antonio's like, nah, I've been, mom's been back in my life for a longer time. So I know, like, I know she loves me. I, I got her back. It's, uh, um, but it's almost like you're throwing the rest of your, like, siblings to the wolves. You're throwing, they're like, eh, mom can use him, whatever. Like, I don't know what they expected. Like, oh, this is going to be a happily ever after family. It's like, no, your children are going to resent you. Veronica is still, like, still resent you to the point she's like, you're still dead to me. It was actually Joe that convinced her to go to Carmen's party because it's like, hey, if you don't go, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. And he's like, are you sending me as the boss or my dad? He's like, you're the CEO. She's like, yeah, but you still have like a majority. Like you sit on the board as a senior like member of the board and stuff. But it's like, yeah, like at the end of the day, I don't like your mom being there either, but it's still your sister because he ended up still going regardless of Margaret being there. To be fair, him and Letty weren't in the best place, but it could still be just a, no, regardless of what's going on, I'm still going to be there to support my daughter, which him and Carmen aren't in the best place because of, like, the whole, like, you hadn't seen none of my drawings before, like, you never saw any of my artwork, so, yeah, put a little sting on it, so he probably just hoped that this would bridge some of that gap. So um, some of the other moving pieces here is, uh, speaking of Veronica, Michael um, is going to some business trip, and uh, and I love that Veronica was like, yeah, make lots of money. He was like, what's that mean? She's like, what? Nothing. It, he's like, oh, because, uh, 
I can make my own. She's like, that's not what it's about. He's like, oh, is this about the 50? He's like, don't worry. I won't spend uh, money without you knowing. And she's like, love you too. Like the fact is he had that like innate response because I think it's been loitered over him sometimes. Like, right. He probably doesn't make all the bread in a family that she like for whatever work he really does, doesn't really always amount to income. So she's probably the one that mainly makes the income in the family. Like, cause she even threw it in his face last episode. The money is mine, not yours. So that probably stung a little. She probably was like, cause the way she was saying like, Ooh, make lots of money. She was talking to your daughter. She was making a joke like, Ooh, daddy go off and make lots of money. You know, but he took it as like a personal attack. Like, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I'll make money. Like he took such offense to it. Uh, but she's got crews following him and it turns out like he got in a vehicle with I think a whole bunch of ladies. It was like a big party or, or maybe he didn't get in a vehicle. I think, I don't remember if he did, but there were a whole bunch of ladies got in a vehicle. It's the same house that Cruz followed him to. So, and he's like, oh yeah, the dinner I went to, it was boring and stuff like that. She's like, okay. Cause he's supposed to be in like San Francisco or something like that for like some like meeting or something. So... Obviously, he's lying. For what purpose? Is he having an affair of his own? Is he actually doing something legitimate? He's just not telling her, which is the biggest mistake. You having your secrets is the word. Like, yeah, because it's going to turn into a thing of, oh, I can't believe you. Like, if it turns out he's not doing anything shady and it's just like a secret thing that he's doing business-wise, it's still not right that you kept that secret. But if things blow up, he's going to be like, oh, I can't believe you didn't trust me. You know, and it's going to be a whole issue in itself. But I... I'm leaning more towards, like, I'm leaving room enough in my head to doubt, like, oh, maybe he's not doing anything shady, but I'm mainly leaning towards shady. Like I said, I personally caught this inkling, like, there might have been a twinge of something between him and Carmen, whether she realizes it, but it just felt, like, kind of weird in that moment, like, some of their interactions. I halfway expected them to start making out at some point, so, I don't know. Um, not unless he's doing some side stuff for Carmen, because he did take an interest in her like artwork and stuff and he was trying to set up stuff for her but we'll see speaking of Carmen circling well I love the way she kind of dropped out all that like yeah oh Margaret's paying for a lot of this and Letty's like okay I'll pay for half of it because she doesn't want Mark because like her and Margaret already had their run in so it's like no 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 I'm not gonna let her like loiter over me of like oh yeah I paid for everything it's like no 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 I don't want her to get credit for all that because in Letty's mind it's like you don't deserve oh being in your daughter's life for a couple weeks Do I like pay like it's like she knows that Letty Letty knows that Margaret's overcompensating like oh you're making oh this big splash like oh like Carmen enjoys the sentiment of it all but at the end of the day it's like you're overcompensating because you're like, oh, trying to throw these lavish gifts and stuff in her face to make up for like the decades you've been in out of her life. But what I also love is the fact is that, yeah, like Margaret gave her like a lavish gift and then Letty gave her a very sentimental gift. It was like one of her drawings. She's like, for so long, I've always had crayons in my hand and I always drew stuff. And she's like, this is the first drawing I ever really liked of my own. And you kept it. And it's like, oh, yeah, scoring mom points, you know? So I thought that was beautiful. And you could tell Margaret's almost like, uh, because it backfired because she was almost like, cool, uh, monetary can't beat sentimental. I mean, yes, it can sometimes, but not in this case. Uh, Letty won Margaret's ear. It's almost like, you know, Letty was like, oh, you don't have to, like, if you want to open it, you can open it here. She, she knew she was coming in with uh, with the KO there. Oh, like hitting, hitting with, that, um, with that counter in fighting games term, I guess, or just video game terms in general. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess in Pokemon terms, it was super effective. Some other interesting points in this episode is Letty letting uh, Mateo know, like, oh, yeah, your dad's back. And he goes and meets his dad. And I think it is so interesting. Mateo's like, hey, man, I'm so happy to see you. I'm like, wow, that is not the reaction I was expecting. Because I'm like, most people be like, you bastard. I can't believe you're back. It's like, no, he's super positive and optimistic. I'm like, oh, man, we could catch up and all that. But Billy's like... I haven't done, like, I'm glad you don't hold any resentment towards me, but he's like, I abandoned you. He was, Billy was like, no, no, no. I was a terrible father to you. I wasn't there for you. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm 10 years sober and stuff like that, but it doesn't take, it doesn't make up for the fact is I wasn't there for you. I abandoned you. And, um, obviously, like, he's like, oh, Joe hit you. I can't believe that. It is like, no, this isn't on Joe. Like, I should have told him I was back. So, but, uh. Billy's like, no, no, let's take things slow. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, no, 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 it's not like that. 
I have not done anything to deserve your forgiveness, Mateo. Let me work to deserve that. And Because he's like, no, no, because you forgiving me, it's like you just being like, oh, everything's forgiven. It's like, no, I, I need to work for that forgiveness. That's the only way I'm going to be good enough to deserve that forgiveness is if I actually put in the time and effort to make up for it. So I thought that was a really interesting thing. And obviously, Mateo went off there, um, Joe, and Joe's like, all right, like, once again, I've never lied to you or your mom. Like that dad of yours, he went off for cigarettes and left. I have always been there for you. Like who's done more for you in that regard? You know, who's really the bad person? Who's the real bad guy in all this? And even later on, because Junior like opens up to um, Mateo being like, yeah, your dad is actually like, I feel more of a connection with him than I do my own dad because of all that uh, he's been helping Junior with. I thought was kind of interesting. But obviously, Junior, like, had some issues with his dad, and it obviously rubs uh, Joe, even rubs Joe the wrong way, knowing, like, cool, my brother, who was kind of, like, the bastard who left his family, and now he's more of a hero in Mateo, Mateo's eyes and Junior's eyes than me, you know, so... But Danielle kind of told him, like, right, you can't have things, things and people be what you want them to be, just, like, just kind of naturally let things come to you, you know? And so with a little push from uh, Junior and Danielle, um, he brought, um, they brought Billy over and him and Mateo kind of bonded. And Billy ended up, once again, he could easily make Joe out to be the villain. It's like, no, like he's, he learned a lot from his sobriety where he like, cause Mateo tells the story like, yeah, you, you pushed me on that swing when I fell and broke my arm. And the moment he said that, I was like, is it that Billy broke your arm? Now, luckily Billy wasn't in an, an abusive asshole where he ended up breaking Mateo's arm intentionally, but it's like, right. He was drunk. And when he was pushing Mateo, Mateo fell, broke his arm, but he was like, I was so drunk. I couldn't even stand on my own two feet. So because of that, Joe ended up taking it, and Mateo's like, whoa, Joe never told me that. It's like, yeah, because Joe maybe not the monster you think he is, and he's the one, that, but obviously Billy's the one that was like, no, you should, you know, get dressed up and go to your sister's party, you know? So I just thought that was kind of fascinating that, he, given the opportunity, he could easily demonize his brother, but it's like, no, your my brother was there more for you than I was. I was not in a good position back then, you know, I would drink all the time, it's like, I wasn't a good person, just showing, the, but even Mateo tried to give him the, um, give him leeway, but being like, at the very least, you're willing to admit your faults. Like, not many people would, but I mean, I'm sure that's part of being a part of the program and being sober for so long. So, it is nice though that obviously what Danielle was able to do for him, and obviously being there to support him in every way that you know. I think it's it's pretty nice. Even like oh, like telling that story about like the shoelaces. She wanted to get shoelaces for those shoes. She could get new shoes, but those are important to her because they represent like her mom saved a lot of money so that those shoes could help her through the trip, and they did uh, getting to the U.S. and. She uh, wants to keep them as a reminder of just, you know, her mom and all that her mom gave and sacrificed for her sake. And so I thought that was a beautiful um, sentiment and element. Uh, but also she talked about like, right, it's hard being away from family, regardless of you and your family not being in a good place. Because even Mateo's like, yeah, but because of where we are, like on a, in a figurative and emotional level, it feels like they're miles away. She's like, yeah, but you basically have an opportunity to be around your family. Like, sometimes you just have to kind of choose to be around them, you know, because it, it almost feels like you choose not to go see them. So she's going to be a really good positive influence and end up bridging a lot of the gap between him and his family. I think it's good. But also their relationship deepening. So that's cute. And beautiful. I hope that doesn't turn out to be some like twisted. I hope Daniela is on the up and up. I, I want, I'm going to give her the benefit of doubt, but there's some sinking feeling in my stomach. Like, you don't think this is a trap, do you? Like, I, I, dude, I was about to say, you don't think it's a Margaret trap because it's like I can't tell. I was like, you would, you would think she wouldn't need to go after Mateo, but I don't know, man. I, I made that whole point earlier, her not having to go after Mateo, but still might as well, you know, plan for every contingency, like every piece to the puzzle, every piece to this plan, like everyone has their own part in Margaret's plan. So I'm like, I don't know, because we got the reveal at the end of the episode. Oh, cool. Margaret's the reason why Billy got transferred here. She paid off someone to send him here. So she was hoping to do what she's doing. She wants to disrupt Joe's life, complicate things, throw him off. Because she knows Billy being back would throw him off kilter. And she's planning on using that as an advantage so that when she makes her move, Joe won't see it coming because he's so blindsided 
uh, because he's so focused on everything else going on. So, obviously, that's all mainly the present day stuff. In the past, though, we had um, them all going to get Rosa, but sadly, they got pulled over by a cop. So, I was thinking, like, I thought what was going to happen is a cop was going to find all $5,000 that they had and then basically take it. But luckily, Joe, like, paid them off with a thousand. So, that was luckily enough, but still. It put them in a sad, uh, situation, sadly, where they are short. Wasn't really sure how that whole situation was going to play out. Luckily, it played out more positively, like I said, than I thought. I mean, granted, they showed up a grand short, and it's like, oh, I gave you a fair price. Yeah, after you stabbed my brother, who tried to uh, kill some of you and... Uh, planned on selling off the other two. So I was like, yeah, it's a fair... It's like, shut up. It's like a bad guy trying to just... Whatever the case may be. It's like, they're, they're uh, selling people, so... It's just like, man, you're just garbage human beings. Kind of feel bad, because at least one of the people there, like, I think that lady that was there was someone that they're probably, like, keeping around, so they couldn't bring her with them, because just due to the scuffle, but... Yeah, like, I, luckily, I was about to wonder, like, when Billy and Joe were like, right, we have to go get the money. So it's like, right, they now owe him 1500 The, the grand day where they already owed him plus another 500 But I was like, man, are they about to have to rob a place? I was like, how are you going to come up with $1,500? Well, they don't have to worry about it because Letty already, like, took the gun. She was ready for action. I think she decided to do that because, well, she already, that's why she probably solidified, like, no, 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 I'll stay here because they'll most likely get caught off guard if I'm left here alone because they would think, like, oh, the boys aren't here, so we're helpless women, so that's why they probably thought, but Carosa made it clear. It's like, no, 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 the moment Billy and Joe get back, they're getting killed and they're going to sell us off, but it's like, nope, we're not going to make it easy for them, and so Letty was ready when the time came. I mean, granted, things popped off pretty badly and they were able to get away. I mean, granted, uh, home dude, well, we won't have to worry about him necessarily because, well, his brother got stabbed in the eye, so he's still out there alive and kicking because the one who, um, because uh, Rosa said that the guy who um, shot at them, which is the dude who got, like, stabbed in the eye, that guy is the one that uh, found her at the hospital, so that's uh the guy that they're, they're with now is like his brother or co didn't he say his cousin brother I think Rosa referred to him as like the cousin or something but yeah they're related he's still an active threat but uh Victor's not cause uh yeah uh sadly his brother or cousin uh which immediately makes me think of uh good uh good girls your brother cousin you know that whole situation uh, with Rio uh but what I thought was really interesting is like, yeah, he's dead. He's actually dead now, whereas the other one was injured. So he was getting revenge for like, oh, you injured my sibling or cousin. And it's like, oh, now I'm doubly going to come after you guys because it's like, he might, well, they don't have Rosa to use as leverage, but all they have to do is track down that vehicle. I mean, granted, this is in the 80s. I don't know how easy that's going to be, but so that's kind of an issue because that's, it feels like that situation is not resolved because we still don't know present day what Rosa is. Like, I, I don't, they haven't really talked about it. They've kept that super vague enough to not really let you know all that happened in that time frame. So, uh, it could be that she died at some point, like unrelated to some criminal stuff. Maybe she got sick and died, something else. Maybe she's living a happy life somewhere else. Uh, we'll probably finally find out. Because I, I think there must be something with Rosa's story, the reason why they're holding off and being like, oh, where is she? Not unless they referenced it in the previous three episodes and I just didn't catch it, or at least don't remember off the top of my head, you know, so. But at, at least for right now, all of them are together and they're happy, so I guess they're going to try and get some new paperwork for Rosa to probably get her working at Heritage House as well, so. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where the past stuff takes us. Obviously, we know where the end result is, but the journey um, there, but also where everything takes us going forward, well, present day as well. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.